This is KBYP with a second video on aligning the Drake TR3 and for the most part the TR4. The TR4 doesn't have a VFO output transformer, so it's different in that regard. It has a solid state VFO. It is absolutely mandatory to make the alignment load referred to in the instructions, a thousand ohm a carbon resistor, a 0 0.005 microfarad. Look at that, 0 0.005 micro microfarad. That shows how old this is. The unit now is microfarad. In fact, in fact, the manual's wrong. Micro microfarad means picofarad. I just noticed that. There's no such thing as a 0 0.005 picofarad capacitor. They type too many U's. But it's a 0 0.005, which does not exist these days, so use a 0 0.0047. It's just a DC blocking. For alignment, crystal oscillator calibration doesn't much matter. 9 megahertz oscillator, get it close to 9 megahertz. Crystal oscillator, notice that it talks about measuring a test point for maximum negative DC voltage. Oscillators run with a negative grid voltage, not positive. So that's the, essentially the same as what I told you about measuring downstream and setting for a peak instead of exactly on frequency. Because it's a VFO and exactly on frequency doesn't matter. Here's the most, one of the most critical alignments here is a VFO. It is absolutely critical to follow this procedure with the alignment fixture. Do not attempt to do it without it. The problem is if this output coupler is off, the oscillator generates a big 10 megahertz harmonic and it takes energy away from the VFO frequency so it has less to contribute to the two mixers. So that's, that's what this, this is for. Tune in to calibrate at 3.8 megahertz. Alignment load between, the, between ground and input terminal of T4. Adjust T4 bottom from access meter reading. Then move the load to the output terminal and adjust T4 top for the maximum S meter reading. That sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, it isn't. Here's the Bible. Radio Engineer's Handbook by Terman. If you don't have it, get it. If you haven't read it, read it. Page 135, circuit theory, resonance circuits. A general resonance curve. That's for series resonant. In the previous video, I mentioned that these circuits are generally tune plate, tune grid, and they rely on resonance circuits. Tube circuits are high resistance, high impedance. So this goes to show how peaky tuned circuits are and how very important it is to get them exactly right. See the zero loss case, the high Q cases? Big peak, very narrow. It's worse with these circuits because they're parallel resonant and there's the parallel response. And you think the series resonant is difficult to get on peak. There's a general resonance curve. This is even worse because in theory with a parallel circuit, there's a response at a single frequency. Here's T4 on the schematic. The procedures put the alignment load across this terminal and adjust the bottom slug. And then on this terminal and adjust the top one as in the manual. The instructions say put the load across the input terminal and adjust the bottom. The arrow points to which is bottom and which is top. So load this terminal and adjust this one. And what that load is doing is dividing that transformer in two so that each side of this mixer circuit can be adjusted more independently to a peak for each side. If that isn't done, it's going to be badly out of alignment and transmit power will suffer. And it'll be possible to get a fair amount of power at some frequency. But as the VFOs change, that power will drop off. That's a problem I've got here now. It made full power at 7.3 megahertz, but down at uh, towards the 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 extra class phone band, it wouldn't make full power, and that implies the VFO transformers out of alignment. Doing the alignment is a different story. Here's the alignment load. Ground must be grounded at the tube socket near as near to the transformer and tube as possible. Three wires there. The nearest one with the O is the output terminal. 
there's a common in the center, and the bottom one back in there where there's a faint eye is the input. So to adjust the bottom of the transformer, I put the alignment load on the input terminal, which is the furthest one in, with the millivolt reading digital multimeter on the AGC point, as I showed in the previous video, the 220k ohm resistor in there below the S meter pot. Got a real strong 30 dB over signal. The AGC voltage is too high. So I'll turn the VFO up in frequency till the voltage becomes four decimal places. three or four. That's indicating to the millivolt. And then I let it rest. It's a mechanical VFO. It takes time to settle out. That reading needs to become stable. And now I put the diddle stick on the bottom slug and I very slowly turn it either way to find a peak to the millivolt. The problem is as it's adjusted, the voltages will tend to drop. So go past the peak either side back and forth a couple times and it won't read 910 millivolts it might read 890 and it'll drop off now adjust the top slug and notice what happens to the to the sound from the speaker when the load is connected it reduces the s meter and changes the tone. It's loading something. Connect that. Put the diddle stick on the top slug. Well, now I've thrown it into overload. So I'll run the frequency up to any value that shows three decimal places. Oops, wrong direction. 1508, 1510, 1520, very slowly until that reading begins to level off. Look, there it hit a peak, started backwards. When it starts backwards, a couple millivolts stop. Don't go beyond it. Good enough? Oh, no, 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 no. No, not a bit. Take the alignment load off. Let the thing stabilize. Remember, all these circuits are coupled together. Everything in this upper left, all of this is coupled together and affected by adjusting that. Except that in 80, the oscillator isn't running. But this is coupling down here into the uh, cathode follower. So give it time to stabilize and check it again and repeat as necessary to get it exactly right because this is ultimately what controls the power output from the transmitter. When it's aligned correctly, you'll notice that when the alignment load is put on the input, the frequency in the speaker doesn't change much. Not much of a frequency change when the load's put on either side. But now I'm gonna try the bottom slug again after running the VFO up a little bit get three decimal places, check the bottom again, just turn it one, oh, wrong way. Okay, that was at peak. Do that a couple times, let it rest in between each time. That's necessary for all these alignment adjustments. It's that tricky. For the injection couplers, start on 40 meters, adjust T3 top, after putting the alignment load from V1 pin 6, which is a plate, to ground. And that's a little hard to see, but there's a, a ground wire to the socket for the filament for the black and the reds on pin 6 at the ceramic capacitor for the plate. 40 meters, get a stable DC voltage on the voltmeter, then tune it for a max. And it was down here, and it should be up here. See, it's picked up almost 200 millivolts. 
The reason it was that far off is because I tried to adjust it by hand without the alignment load, and that goes to show what a gross error that causes. So ignore the people that say the alignment load is not necessary. They're wrong. Because I had peaked it by ear. It was way off. Now this is for 40 with the alignment load on pin 6 of the tube. That's the same for 15 meters, so go to 15 and adjust T2 top. That way, that's not following the procedure in the manual exactly, but it's leaving the alignment load where it is. It takes less effort to do it. So then adjust the top of T2 right there for a max and you can hear the receiver peaking hear the receiver drop off that shows what a weak mixer input does adjust these to the millivolt remember they're parallel resonant on 10 meters adjust the bottom of T1 which is right down right up here and be careful not to readjust the wrong one but peak 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 505 507 whoops 8 10 11 12 it's slowing down 17 I'm turning at a noticeable amount and it's not changing. There. I had to turn it a lot to get a peak in the receiver tone and receiver response. And that's not working because there isn't enough signal to get a change in the AGC voltage. So I've had to turn on the RF generator on the middle 10 meter segment and couple some signal in by the wire from the uh, cowl oscillator to get a good reading on that. Then adjust the bottom of T1. Whoops. Too much. Run the VFO up. To get a three digit reading, let it stabilize for a second. Very touchy. 890, 95, backing off. Now see, now it's jumped up to 900. Apparently the AGC has responded. So I'm very slowly turning it back and forth to get a now there it rolls off. 16 back and forth now it's 950. It's ratcheting its way up. So right there. And the VFO may be changing also. Doesn't take much change in the VFO to change that figure. Now with the alignment load on the cathode follower the bottom of the 220 ohm resistor on the right of the 33k then adjust the top slug for 10 meters because we're still in that band which gives this looking at the millivolt millivolt change and here again I had set this by ear without the calibration the alignment load dire mistake oops out of range Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen. Turning it a lot. Oops, out of range again. This goes to show how critical it is to follow the instructions and use that alignment load, and how terribly bad the advice from the so-called experts are. Because this slug was off about a turn and a half. There's peak. Now adjusting the top of T2 for fifteen meters. We get 
not quite so radical a response. There's about peak. Now on 40, adjusting T3 bottom, way, way off, horribly off, because I try to do it by ear without the alignment load. 1730, 1740, right there. And for 15 meters, same procedure, drops off, peaking up, dropping off, and back to peak. So far, what this has done is given us proper signal input, hopefully, to the cathode follower V3. For adjustment of mixer and RF coils, absolutely mandatory to start on 80 meters because, as I mentioned in the previous video, they switch in additional inductors in parallel for higher bands. So the 80 must be set first, then 40, then 20, etc., etc. You can do this on receive. I've already gotten it fairly close, so I'm going to go to transmit without the finals with the oscilloscope. Now we're going to line this complex of parallel resonant T7, 8, 9, and 10 for V4 mixer and V6 final driver in transmit. Because again, from the previous video, they don't have to be aligned and received. Receive is plenty sensitive. But having this off just a little bit will kill the transmitter output badly. So measuring with the scope here, where I've put two 1,000 picofarads in series and tapped in between them. Take that 500 out, put two 1,000s in series and replace that with it. So the scope probe is between those two yellow capacitors and the scope is on perhaps 10 volts per division. So with the filament power supply turned off and your, trans your power supply won't have this, but I've got split supplies for the 12 volt and for the finals. With the rig in CW, a little bit of transmit gain, and block the push to talk on, we get some carrier. That's at the final grids. So then we adjust the appropriate transformers for the correct peak output. That's not showing very definitely. So I'll crank the drive up. and adjusting. Good job, Dingbat. I was doing it on 15 meters. There we go. Notice how I told you that the 80 meter adjustments affect every other band. That was it. So peak that puppy. making sure to have this, which I didn't, set on five. When I adjust it through five, it gives a change. And I adjust the, now see how much more amplitude there was when I set the variable capacitor at five? That goes to show just how critical that, that uh, RF tune capacitor is. It's gotta be set to the exactly proper capacitance value, not just resonant peak. And for the other transformer, Adjust it also. Nice big signal. Then adjust them both again just to be sure. Then go to 40 meters and set the RF tune at 7. And, and on top of the chassis, adjust the appropriate transformers for peak. Being extremely careful not to reach around here and stick my hand into the top of the final tubes. See how far that was off? That's why there was low power at 7150. Set that puppy to peak. Since the circuits are coupled together, go back and check the other one, the first one again. And then it's wise to move the RF tune just a little bit either side and make sure that that's a correct peak. So I'm gonna do that. Turn it just a tiny bit And then again, try to peak it, try to peak both transformers. Did that make more? Possibly.
there I think that's more same on 20 meters with RF tune at 5 adjusting the slugs up here for 20 and make sure not to miss and adjust the wrong slug because then you got to go back and, and retune that band way way off there wouldn't have been any transmit power on 20 And again, this is all necessary because I changed the bias on these tubes. I, I put extra voltage drop in the plates. And I've adjusted the 10 meter, but weak signal, the one tuning shaft is tuned partway in. The one for 10 meters in the back is screwed almost all the way out. And that's probably not going to work on transmit. On 10 meters, it's mandatory to align it on transmit. And I made a mistake. I forgot to take the alignment load off. So guess what? I get to do it over. Now notice the difference in the drive level on 80. That's peaked. Then at 40, where there's more scope probe losses, 40 meters is greater. The reason for that is that on 80, the only source is the VFO. On 40, it's mixing through another amplifier with the crystal. So that's why the amplitude is greater on 40. Taking the alignment load off made a little difference in adjusting the, the first transformer in a 10 meters. Slight. But again, then after doing this without final power, it's necessary to then do it into a dummy load and do it for real on transmit. And that procedure is the same. Don't go back and adjust the VFO on transmit because the VFO and the mixer and the injection transformers are isolated through the cathode follower. But everything after that needs to be then rechecked on transmit. Because when the final amplifier is powered up, that changes the load on the final driver, which changes the load on the mixer, because they're all coupled together. So it will not be right just going through the adjustments in the manual. And this is what Drake implies when they say in the manual, if you can't get it aligned, send it to us and we'll do it. So that's basically I didn't show you the alignment of the sideband filters, but that's that's an entirely different procedure that takes sweep alignment. And that's going to take this long just to show that. I'm going to drag the video out. And that's basically a thing of either you understand what to do or not. So I, I really can't teach you that. Especially because some of this is done by feel and by intuition, strangely enough. So, got to have a scope. Got to have an RF Jenny. Got to do it. If it's out of alignment, got to do it three times. One is not good enough. Again, do it roughly on receive, so you're not wearing on the transmit tubes. Then do it in, do it in CW transmit with the power disconnected from the final heaters. And then finally, align everything beyond the cathode follower in transmit at full power, KBYP.